Hey everyone, I am Jenea Future Khan and these are my beauty secrets or handsome secrets or beautiful boy secrets. Uh, either way, um, it's how to keep my skin feeling nice and fresh despite the fact that sometimes I'm up to three in the morning because I'm writing or because of some kind of protest and also how we keep these locks nice and moisturized and that twist out fly so that the haters can keep seeing our beautiful lion's mane out in the world. All right, let's do this. Every morning I get up, I end up doing 100 push-ups, and so I need water immediately. So that is number one on the beauty secrets, God's juice, water. So get that in, get that in as much as you can. And then I need a whole whack of protein um, and greens. So I use Amazing Grass, their protein supplement and their greens food supplement. So I put it in my shaker cup here and now I gotta get the greens and do that. Pop that in there. We'll get back to the skincare just. So I actually start with a little bit of rose water and I just spray that on my face. And I think it makes, it makes me feel good. I feel good about it. Um, it kind of prepares me for what's next, which is this guy right here. I love this cleanser. Um, it's really sensitive. It's really kind to my skin. And I just kind of throw some of that on right there. Get that little glow up. My skin is very sensitive. Um, the thick skin that it takes to do activist work is really a metaphor. Getting the rose water and using this really sensitive cleanser, it just helps to kind of neutralize. I like to stay as natural as possible. One of my favorite things to use actually is just aloe straight from the plant. I put a little bit on, especially in the parts that are very, very, very sensitive. I rub that in there. And you wanna just give that a couple of seconds um, or minutes ideally to just settle. And you can always feel that it's sort of tightening of the pores because aloe is just such a natural astringent. I like to think that beauty is non-binary just like me. And we get to choose however we relate to it and however we enter the conversation. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that is so highly gendered. Um, because when I think of beautiful, people are never more beautiful to me than when they're doing what they love. I grew up as sort of weird looking. Um, you know, I was straight up and down. I didn't have all these curves and I wasn't very feminine. So I grew up actually understanding that I was ugly. Um, and I spent a long time believing that. And I think so much of adulthood is unlearning. And then I sort of got into, I grew into myself and I felt more confident. I sort of embraced that non binariness So I've had this aloe on um, for maybe a few minutes. It feels good and tight. So let's wash this off. A little bit of aloe got in my mouth. That's gonna happen on occasion and um, the worse that it tastes, the better it is for your skin. So I am suffering at the moment, I'm suffering with you. Um, I'm glad that we can be in this struggle together. I am going to pop on a little bit of retinol. I just pat that in there and it's so thick and rich and um, hydrating. And then because it's so thick, I love having a hydrator like this. Give it one right there. I like what I like and I don't like to change. I actually use this, um, I got it at Target. Having a skincare routine actually, I really struggled with how to do it at first. Um, not because there's some kind of science to it, but because it takes time, you know? Um, but then I thought, I'm really great at taking time to drink a bunch of water, which we're gonna take a moment to do right now and I'm good at taking protein. So why, why was skincare hard? And I realized it's because I, I had sort of internalized this thing where it was really feminine to do. And I, somewhere along the line, as I got older, I had sort of deprioritized it um, as something unnecessary. Um, and how boring is that? Imagine, imagine that there are billions of people on the planet, billions. And that the story that we're told is that there's two genders and two sexes and one sexuality. How boring. Now, so when I started to realize that 
some of the my relationship to care of self um it was informed by these really dated and archaic understandings of what masculinity or feminine femininity was it's just you know it needs to go you know um i think that we should get rid of the parts that don't work and keep the parts that do having done all of that i'd like to throw this guy in um seal that moisturizer in there next important thing maybe the most important thing sunscreen i actually just got this at whole foods um and i just like it it's really thick now remember you have to figure out a kind of sunscreen that works for you um i like something that literally feels like a huge like paste in this arm I, i just want to feel protected have i always worn sunscreen no um i had to figure that out because i didn't understand I really did not understand um that my skin needed it at the level that it did. Last night I uh washed my hair while it was wet. I um I brushed it out after I washed it and then I put in this conditioner. This is great to set twists to leave in. You need leave in conditioner especially if you have hair texture uh like mine because washing is fantastic but it sort of also strips the hair and our hair is so sensitive um and it requires so much care. You know, once you're done, you always want to make sure that your hair is sort of covered and protected and so, you know, I have my had my do-rag on that I slept with and um also I just love the paisley pattern on it. I know that I sort of want the the curl pattern to sit this way across my face. And so putting that intention um the night before really helps because Our hair is so fantastic in that it can sort of hold any shape that you put it in. Um so get your you 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 know you have a wet you get your conditioner in. I use rose water to keep my hair wet because the ends do dry while I'm twisting it because it still takes me a little while. These are two strand twists. Let's get to the untwisting. The great thing is this is a bit of an un, this is like a what is it? Um unboxing for me because you never know <laughs> what level of twist you're going to get because it's always like a little bit of anticipation to see how well you did and what the curl pattern is like. So, okay. Don't feel like you owe me anything, but I did this for you. I really worked hard on these twists <laughs> for you so that I could give you a good show around my hair. This is stage 1. Um I like what I'm seeing and if you've, you know, It's going to be at about here by the time we're done, but this is a really great stage. It's healthy. And now very, you know, at your own pace and in your own way. You want to start breaking these apart without breaking the the curl pattern. So, I had bad hair growing up. That's what um people called my hair. They said I had bad hair. And I really internalized that. And then I think um because it required so much care because things were complicated then. Um my hair was cut very very short and so at a time I think when you're really looking at yourself as a what um you know at the time what was girlhood for me I didn't feel beautiful at all. I felt like I had ugly hair and Not only was it ugly hair but it was so it was short and I, I it was around that time where I really started to get mistaken for a boy. And I wish I could tell you it's because they saw something in me. Uh because some of us are just too cute for two genders. But no, um it was because I didn't really conform to this like really rigid standard of what beauty was and then short hair was really masculinized. Up until I was 18, I would get asked almost every day, actually 19 if we're being honest, um when I look back, are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? When I was in high school, and Alicia Keys came out. She really, I think, her just by virtue of how she wore her hair. Um and now I'm just sort of going to start working the roots a little bit to get a little bit of body and to break up some of those parts because you want I want that sort of fuller head. But when she wore those braids, my god, I felt ah, uh, liberated in a way. And I'm still trying to fit in, you know, and so having these two front braids that she sort of revolutionized um the sort of celebration of hair it, it was really a game changer for me and you know i remember when i had these two braids running this way which really you know you remember she was sort of wore them this way nobody asked me if i was a boy um in that time 
And I remember feeling so relieved. And one day my sister kindly came over and did my hair. And she had decided um, that those braids were no longer in style. She was, by the way, she was 100% correct. They absolutely were not. Um, and she just gave me these cornrows, a really beautiful style. And when I looked in the mirror, all I saw was an ugly little boy. And I just remember feeling so badly and then my sister felt badly even though she had done um, this really wonderful offering. I think about that moment often, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm in my hair, literally in my hair, of my hair, um, you know, how, I think about a couple of things. One, how awful it was um, that I just, that people like me um, couldn't find a place in the world for themselves. And then two, what happens when you are so caught up in your own pain that you can't accept the offerings that people are making around you? We think it's sort of unprecedented in the history of the world and that nobody can know what that's like. And especially if we live in a world that's doesn't really prioritize healing. So you really want to get in these roots right now. And how we treat people is very much informed by how we treat ourselves. So I want to tell you this, activism doesn't build character. It reveals it. This work is, um, re it's a revelation. You need the revelation before we can sort of have these revolutions. And um, it's all in steps. You know, it takes time. But the muscles that we develop in choosing life, choosing to live on our terms and our way, off script, writing our own stories, it's always worth it. And it takes time, but it's a choice that we make every day. And there's power in that. There's agency in that. In a world that tells you that you don't get to have a choice, that you don't get to have a voice. There's some use a little bit of rose water. But let me tell you something. We may not have been born into these conditions. We may not have designed this society. But when we accept these conditions as our own, they do become ours and we forfeit a part of who we are. Every time that we accept conditions that we didn't design, we forfeit a part of who we are. And that trade-off, it's not, it's simply not worth it. This is um, a leave-in conditioner. Watch, watch the fireworks happen. Sometimes I just use things that I find along the way. And one time, um, or that someone else finds along the way. So my cousin <laughs> got this care package once. Um, I guess it was just like a random thing when she won some kind of award. And it's beard oil. It's beard oil. Um, but I mess with it. I put it in my hair. It's got um, yojoba and almond oil and coconut oil and all these things. And I really like how the oil works with a little bit of water. So I'm gonna use a little bit of rose water and I'm gonna get under there because we love fritz. We love fritz, we love body, all right? No more limiting ourselves and making us small to fit into the limited colonial imagination. Non-binary is beautiful. Black hair is beautiful. So I'd be generous with this, um, you know, and sort of get in there more. All right, we have been on quite the journey. Uh, for those of you who are not in the know, which is to say that you don't have your hand in my hair exactly at this moment, it's still uh, damp because, you know, we did this last night because I did it for you. I wanted that fresh. So it's actually going to rise throughout the day like a beautiful loaf of bread. It's going to rise throughout the day and um, get that body and all that sort of moisture and everything else is going to keep the hair um, really well protected. But you know, I just, um, I feel really grateful to have shared the space with you. What I want to say is this, time is the greatest gift we have to give. And uh, the time that you've spent sort of sharing these experiences with me and um, the time that we offer each other, I think is so incredibly important. And I just feel grateful um, and I feel really humbled and also very responsible. I think we have to feel so much more responsible for how we show up for each other. And um, ah, I am thrilled to have been a part of Beauty Secrets. And I am thrilled to remind everyone that beauty is non-binary. Beauty is non-binary. And we can, however we want to embody it, whatever that means to us, is the right way. Thank you again. And um, 
I will see you soon. And as we say in the movement, stay safe, stay dangerous. <laughs>